Insurance companies make billions of dollars of profit on Advantage plans. As agents, we get higher commissions and we get paid commissions for life. But is an Advantage plan really in your best interest? Yes, Advantage plans are decent insurance, but there are some definite disadvantages with Advantage plans that you need to be aware of before you make that choice. Now, the first disadvantage of the Advantage plan is you are going to have to live within the limitations of networks. Uh, all Advantage plans are network plans. And so there are two types of networks within the Advantage plans, and that will be uh, HMOs and PPOs. HMO or Health Maintenance Organization, PPOs, Preferred Providers. But with the networks always come restrictions as well as limitations. And so one of the uh, restrictions on an HMO plan is uh, you typically have to see your primary care doctor before you can uh, see a specialist. In other words, the primary care doctor is the gatekeeper, and they're going to make sure you really do need to see a specialist so they have to give you a referral. Now, PPOs do not generally require that. As long as you stay within your network, uh, they're fine for you to call up any specialist in network and, and make your own appointment to do that. Now, uh, another restriction is just the sim simply the size, and that's why I describe this with a small box. Uh, HMOs are going to have less options for sure. There's less doctors, less hospitals, less providers. Now, that doesn't mean to say there's not sufficient amount, but there's definitely going to be less on the HMO versus the PPO. And the reason for that is because uh, when these providers get paid, uh, the contract on the PPO pays them more. In other words, when they see uh, patients and provide services, the PPO always pays uh, more than the HMO. Now, the HMO, uh, the, the, the way that uh, they lure them into those plans is they'll tell the providers, well, we'll send you more, more patients, more clients. And some doctors are interested in building a practice, and they may be interested in the quantity. Uh, some doctors say, no, I'm not interested in quantity. I want, I want more money. So they may only take the PPO. But uh, these are all voluntary. Some doctors will take both networks and be a part of those networks. Some will be on one and not the other. And some will take none of them. Uh, it's totally uh, at the discretion if they feel like they want to um, be included in the network. Another uh, issue with uh, these network plans is out of network benefits. So if I ever want to go out of my network and I'm on an HMO plan, if you do, uh, other than urgent care or emergency situations, you will pay 100% of the expense. In other words, that HMO plan will not pay for any providers outside the network other than urgent care and emergency situations. It means you're bound to stay in that network. You have to. Now, the PPO allows you to go out of the network. Uh, you can go out as long as the provider takes Medicare. But here's the issue. If I go out on my network, it's going to cost you more money. If I stay within my PPO network, uh, my max out of pocket is going to be anywhere from maybe three to $5,000 a year. I go out of the network, it could be seven to $10,000 a year. So I have the right to do it, but it's going to cost me substantially more. So when we go on a vantage plan, we're going to have to live with network limitations and restrictions uh, that come with them. Now, if I were to compare that to uh, original Medicare A and B with a submetal plan, uh, I'm talking out here. Okay, it's huge. Why? Because the only thing you have to do is find out if that provider takes Medicare. And most providers do take Medicare. You don't even have to ask them if they take your supplemental plan because if they take original Medicare A and B, they will take your supplemental plan of choice. So in that situation, it's almost like we have unlimited options. Now, not everyone takes Medicare for sure, but the majority of providers are going to. So you can really go almost anywhere that you would like to. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, I want to invite you to go right up here and actually click on a link that will uh, allow you to watch what I call the Medicare Essentials Workshop. It's a workshop that I did that really is going to show you everything you need to know about Medicare uh, from A to Z, uh, how to enroll, when to enroll, and uh, the plan options for you. So, so go to that link and check it out. The second disadvantage is you take on the risk of co-pays. Now, I know that whenever you see the uh, professional athletes and the actresses and actors advertise uh, these Advantage plans, uh, they give you the impression that everything's going to be free, everything's going to be zero. And that's it's just simply not true. Now, there will be a few things that are going to be zero. You can usually see your primary care doctor for a zero copay. Your preventive is going to be a zero copay. Uh, they will include uh, a gym membership uh, at no cost to you. Uh, they also uh, sometimes will allow you to have some lab work in the network at zero. So you're going to have a couple of items that are going to be zero for sure. However, the majority of service, the great majority of services, you're going to have some type of a responsibility. It's either going to be a copay 
or on some uh, uh, instances, it's going to be coinsurance. It's going to actually be a percentage of the bill. So the whole point is with Advantage plans, uh, one of the disadvantages, it's a, it's a, it's a pay-as-you-go system. Uh, and you have no idea what's in store for your health, and so you're taking on the risk of your copays. Uh, for instance, if you go to a specialist, it will not be at a zero copay. You're going to spend anywhere from 25 to $50 to see a specialist, a cardiologist, uh, uh, your dermatologist, an orthopedic doctor. Uh, it's per visit, 25 to $50. If you have an outpatient uh, surgery, it's not going to be zero. It's going to cost you anywhere from probably 250 to $400 in a copay. Any outpatient procedure would be the same. An MRI, a PET scan, or a CAT scan will not be zero. It's going to cost you anywhere from two to three hundred dollars a copay each time you have one of those tests. Uh, if you go to the hospital, again, it's not zero. Uh, on the average, it's about three hundred fifty dollars a day, up to a certain limit, usually five or six days, and that would be each hospitalization. After you've met the limit, then there would be a, a zero after that. But again, it's a pay-as-you-go system, and because we don't know what's in store for our health, we're basically running the risk. Now, one of the good news is this: though I do pay my copays, uh, eventually I will hit my max out of pocket for the year. Uh, and so then your co-pays are going to stop. But my wallet's out, my, my checkbook is out until I've hit that max out of pocket uh, that is going to, to be established. And again, the co-pays are not crazy high. Uh, they're very reasonable. But again, uh, you have no idea what your health's going to look like. So therefore, we could have some surprises and end up spending more in our co-pays than what we would if, if I'm on a supplemental plan, uh, especially if you go with the G plan, uh, you only have um, one out-of-pocket expense, and that's the B deductible. You don't have any uh, uh, co-pays or co-insurance. Uh, you have the B deductible once a year. This year, that's $233. Next year, it's going down to $226. So my out-of-pocket in that situation is a premium that I pay the insurance company because I eliminate the risk of the co-pays and the co-insurance. I have only the risk of a small part B deductible. So that's the difference between those two systems. So that third disadvantage is what I just spoke about, um, and I want to elaborate more on that, and that is called the max out-of-pocket, and these are annual numbers. Now, right now, and again, the, uh, the, we do business all over the country, so I'm just being kind of broad-stroked here, but right now, uh, most of the HMOs are going to have uh, some kind of a max out-of-pocket somewhere between about 2500 to maybe $4,000 for the year. Your PPO plans are going to be around $3,500 to uh, about uh, probably $7,000 range. Okay, uh, but we're going to pay copays. But what happens is uh, these annual uh, max out of pockets reset uh, every January, and so we pay copay, 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 copay until we hit the max out of pocket. And then we, if we hit it, then we're done for the year. But then that's going to reset every January. And so what the really the kind of worst thing can happen? I've had it happen before. Uh, someone gets diagnosed, to so say they get diagnosed with cancer. And um, had a lady, in fact, not long ago, got diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. And so anyone that gets cancer uh, that goes through treatment, uh, meaning radiology, chemotherapy, maybe possibly a surgery, hospital stay, those kind of things, people on cancer almost always max out of their plan. And so she got diagnosed with cancer at the end of last year, uh, around September, and so she very quickly maxed out. In that example where she was, uh, the county she lived in, the max out of pocket was $67 on her PPO plan. And so within a couple of months of that cancer diagnosis, she had maxed out because of the expensive treatments. Well, then it reset. And so we reset again. Uh, the max out of pocket stayed the same going into the next year. And then again, within two or three months, she maxed out again, another $6,700. So what happened? She spent $13,400 in less than a six-month window. Why? Because the max out of pockets are going to reset every January. And again, so if someone gets cancer, probably going to max out. And the timing in that situation uh, was really terrible because it was such, uh, you know, back to back uh, from the end of one year to the beginning of another year. So that's definitely a disadvantage on the Advantage plan. The fourth disadvantage would be the prescription drug plan that's part of uh, the, the Medicare Advantage plan. And so when someone gets a, a, um, a Medicare Advantage plan, almost always it includes prescription drug. Now the exception would be someone that uh, qualifies for VA or TRICARE or someone's retired from uh, the government, uh, civil service, and they have what's called FEHB benefits, FEHB benefits. Uh, that group of people there actually can get a plan that's just called an MA only, and they can continue getting their medications through those other systems. 
uh, and then they just use the benefits of the Medicare Advantage um, uh, uh, program. But most people that are not VA TRICARE or federal employees are going to have a Medicare Advantage plan that's going to include a prescription drug plan. So the MA part of this covers us for inpatient, outpatient, and then the PD is the prescription drug, that Part D plan that's embedded. And the negative is that insurance company picks it for you. Uh, they embed the plan, and that's what you have to choose from. And sometimes they really are very good, and sometimes they're very mediocre. And so that's why when people go on advantage plans, you have to make sure you're going to be happy with uh, your copays and out-of-pocket expenses for your medications. I've seen people that liked Advantage because they didn't want to spend any premium, but all the money they saved uh, on a premium for uh, what they'd be spending on a med sup, all that money they saved, they spent at the pharmacy. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you, this embedded drug plan is going to be good because you didn't choose it. Uh, the company chose it for you. They chose the formulary and they chose uh, the copays and all those uh, details of that plan. You didn't get to pick that. All right. So it's an embedded drug plan. Now, they advertise this as though it's a wonderful thing because why? Because they don't charge you a premium to embed that as part of the package. But it doesn't mean your med medications are going to be free. You, like all people, are going to pay copays for your medications. There's just zero premium for them to add that on. But again, they selected the plan. You didn't get to do that. Now, if I compare that again uh, to uh, if I stay in A and B and I get that supplemental plan, well, what happens? That supplemental plan does not have an embedded drug plan. No, we actually have to add one and we call those standalone drug plans, standalone. And so in most zip codes, I've got anywhere from 15 to 30 different plans to choose from. So now in this scenario, uh, I get to pick and choose. Uh, based upon the medications that I'm taking, uh, based upon the pharmacy that I'd like to go to. So I'm the one that's in the driver's seat here making that decision. It's not embedded. It's a separate one. Yeah, I've got a separate premium uh, for that. But again, I got to select that plan. And then the good news is if I don't like my plan every year, October 15th to December 7th, when we have the open enrollment for Medicare, now I can switch that plan. So next year, I may be taking more meds or less meds so I can modify my drug plan with no health questions whatsoever uh, is as long as it's in my service area of the area where I live, it's available to me, uh, then I can enroll in a new drug plan. All right. So that's the difference between these two systems. So with the advantage, that disadvantage would be they pick it for you. Hopefully it's a good one. You just run the risk of that. Now, the fifth disadvantage is the fact that all Medicare Advantage plans are only written, folks, for one year, and that's a calendar year. Okay, And so when you enroll in that plan in July, it's your plan for six months. You enroll into it in uh, January, it's going to be 12 months, but that's it. And so what this uh, agreement is, it's basically an agreement between Medicare, the insurance company, and you. Okay, And you all enter into this one-year agreement. And so what Medicare says to the insurance company is they have the right to do whatever they want with that plan for the next year. Uh, if the plan wasn't profitable for them, then they're going to pull the plan. Uh, they can improve the plan. They can downgrade the plan. They can add benefits. They can take benefits away. And so it's an, uh, just a one-year agreement between the, the, the three parties. And so that's why every year we have this period of time, uh, October 15th to December 7th. Okay, And also uh, January 1 uh, through um, March 31st, where we have the opportunity if someone's on an Advantage plan during this period of time, they can change their Advantage plans. Now, you can't change every week, but each of these election periods, uh, you have an opportunity to change the plan. So we can change it October 15th to December 7th for a January 1 start date. And if we decide that we didn't like that the first quarter of the year, we can make another change and move to a different Advantage plan. We have that eligibility. And the reason for that is because now we have these plans that are very fluid. They're changing. Doctors come and go. Uh, hospitals come and go. And so sometimes copays go up, sometimes they go down. But the terms of those are changing. And that's why we can actually switch those plans. So it's one year. Now, if I compare that to my supplemental plan, supplemental plans are written for life. So once that supplemental plan has been issued, whether you buy an F plan, G plan, N plan, or whatever you get, it's a, it's a lifetime contract. Uh, and uh, that insurance company can never cancel. They can never change the terms of the coverage. Now, they can change the premium, and, and they will over time. Uh, everything goes up because of medical inflation. Even Medicare Advantage things go up in copays and max out of pockets. But with the supplemental plan, it's written for life. That Medicare Advantage plan uh, was written for that calendar year, where this, written for life, uh, just simply means that that insurance company can never cancel that supplemental plan except for non-payment 
determine a premium. It doesn't matter if you have lots of claims. I hope you don't, but if you're really sick and you have a lot of claims, they can't cancel because of that. They can't cancel because of your age. Uh, they can't cancel because they're not making a profit. <laughs> They've issued that policy, and uh, it is your policy. You pay the premium. You absolutely have that uh, for the rest of your life. And the good news is that's the same coverage anywhere you go. You don't have to live within that network. If you're outside traveling or doing whatever, anytime you pull out that red, white, and blue card and that uh, uh, that supplemental card, uh, you have the same coverage in all 50 states and the U.S. Ter territories. Not the same when it comes to that Medicare Advantage plan. Again, why? Because you have a network uh, of doctors and different providers. The sixth disadvantage is what we call portability. Portability means can you take that policy with you uh, if you move? Uh, so uh, today I'm shooting this uh, from a suburb of Kansas City, Missouri, Overland Park, Kansas, where our home office is. And um, if someone moves from this area and let's say they decide to move to Denver, or they're going to go to you know, Cincinnati or they're going to move to Miami or wherever they're going to go. Uh, if I have that Advantage plan, I cannot take that with me. Why is that? Well, because Advantage plans are, are tied to what we call a service area, service area. Right. And there's 34 of those around the country. So if I leave one service area and I go to another one, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to get a different policy. That means I'm going to have to find uh, more doctors and hospitals and decide what network is going to suit me best when I when I make that move, because Advantage plans are not portable. They're not really tied to you. They're tied to the service area. So as long as you're enrolled in Medicare A and B and you live in the service area, you're able to have that plan. But if I leave that service area, go somewhere else, uh, then I'm definitely going to have to get a different plan because uh, they're, they're not portable. Now, let's compare that again to a supplemental plan. What happens? A supplemental plan is actually tied to you, tied to you. So once it's written, it can never be canceled because you move from Kansas City to uh, uh, Dallas, Texas. You take that with you. It's totally portable. Um, uh, now, there are some places where you may move that they may raise that rate a little bit because uh, rates are higher in the area that you move to. That happens. I've had people move all over the country, and it's rarely a big issue. Uh, but the point is they cannot cancel that because you moved. The Advantage plan, once you move, it's going to be canceled. Uh, you have a window of time where you uh, can have the right to get a different Advantage plan in that new area where you move to. But with some plans, you never have to worry about that. You do a change of address, and uh, now you're living somewhere else, and that supplemental plan is still in force, still, still the same. Uh, type of coverage as well. So that's the nice thing about supplemental plans versus the Advantage plan. It's tied to you, not tied to that service area. Totally portable. And then number seven, disadvantage these plans. And this is probably one of the uh, biggest uh, problems that I personally have with Advantage plans. And that is the Advantage plans have what is called pre-authorizations. Okay, pre-authorizations. So what does that mean? A pre-authorization is some kind of a healthcare service that you need that is probably a little bit more on the expensive side. Uh, you certainly don't have to have a pre-authorization or pre-approval to go see your primary care doctor or to see a specialist uh, to have lab work, those kinds of things. But uh, there are many, many services with the Advantage plan. I think on the average right now, about 70% of all services needed on the Advantage plan have to be pre-approved, which means what? Well, it means your doctor says uh, you need a knee replacement, you need a hip replacement. Well, just because doc says you need it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get that because what happens? That doctor's office is going to have to contact the Advantage plan, and that Advantage plan is going to have someone sitting in a cubicle, uh, and uh, they're going to look at the determination of that, the reason for that. And in order for them to pay for it, they're going to have to agree with the doctor's uh, recommendation, and they actually have to approve it. And sometimes they do, and frankly, sometimes they don't. Uh, I had a lady recently that needed a knee replacement. Advantage plan did not agree with the decision, and they denied uh, the, the coverage of that. I uh, had a lady not long ago that uh, needed a full hip replacement. And the Advantage plan said, no, uh, we believe therapy for nine months is sufficient, and we'll revisit the possibility of hip replacement. Another lady, again on Advantage plan, needed a hip replacement, and um, uh, they said, we won't pay for a full hip, but we will uh, pay for a rod to, to be inserted. That's all we'll cover. And that's all she got. And so the whole point is here, what's happening is your doctor does not have the final say-so. That Advantage plan has the final say-so. And it doesn't mean they won't approve it, but you've got to go through that process. And I've seen plenty of times where it was delayed, uh, therapy instead of surgery and different things happen and that can be very frustrating now again as I compare that to a supplemental plan we have no pre-authorizations whatsoever <laughs> if Medicare says that they will cover that and uh, your doctor says you need that end of story 
Why is that? Because the insurance company has absolutely no say so whatsoever. And that's what you got to remember about med sub plans. They follow Medicare. If Medicare pays, they have to pay. Now, if Medicare doesn't pay, they're not going to other than maybe foreign travel uh, emergency benefits. But if Medicare pays, they have to pay based upon the letter that you purchase, whether that was an F or G or an N plan. So the terms of the supplemental plan um, uh, that you buy will determine uh, what gaps you're responsible for. But if Medicare is going to pay, that supplemental plan has got to pay because uh, they will follow Medicare. So again, we don't have to deal with pre-authorizations whatsoever. And to me, that's one of the biggest issues because now your doctor has the final say-so. It's not the insurance company that has any say-so uh, whatsoever. But with the Advantage, they have a say-so on that. And then lastly, Advantage plans. Now notice my terminology here. Advantage plans could be permanent. Well, what I mean by that? Well, in the majority of states, if you're on an Advantage plan, what happens if you're on that Advantage plan any more than a year, year, two, three, four, five, or some period of time, what happens is the only way you can get off of that is to go through underwriting, okay? And so what most states require is uh, the underwriting process uh, can um, uh, be expected for you to be able to make a switch. So what this means is I'm on an Advantage plan and I would like to switch to a supplemental plan. And so uh, what happens is uh, I can make this uh, switch as long as I qualify October 15th through uh, December 7th. And I also can do it January 1 through the uh, March 31st. So I have this period of time here. This is called the OEP and this is called the AEP. Right. So if I'm on an Advantage plan, I can switch to a supplemental plan, but I have to go through underwriting if I've been on that plan any more than a year, sometimes even less than that. And so that underwriting is a process where we have to ask you 25 or 30 health questions. We have to check all your medications to see what you're presently being treated for and what you've been treated for for the last 24 months. And we may have to get a statement from your doctor as well about any kind of concerns. And so this underwriting process is, is for this reason. We have to give that information then to the supplemental company that you would like to go with. Uh, and now they're going to uh, go through this process to see if they're going to approve you or not. They can approve your case and they can also deny your case. Now, I will tell you this, you don't have to be ready to run a marathon to make a switch from Advantage to a supplemental plan, but there could be certain conditions, pre-existing conditions that are going to matter. Uh, if someone has rheumatoid arthritis, it's very difficult today to get uh, you approved to, to switch. If you have spinal stenosis, even one AFib incident in your medical record, you'll never switch with that. Certain medications, uh, if you've been taking those in the last 24 months, uh, they will not approve the case. Right now, gabapentin, very difficult to get through because you've got some kind of nerve damage probably. An insulin-dependent diabetic uh, or even a type 2 diabetic that, ha that had some complications from diabetes, such as neuropathy or retinopathy, uh, those kind of cases we cannot get through. I uh, had a lady recently that uh, was recommended to have uh, a surgery and uh, she was on Advantage Plan, wanted to switch, and she had that in her, in her health records. Doctors recommending surgery, they're not going to approve her until that surgery is already done and she's done with her rehab. So those are the kind of things that can happen that can keep you from moving to a supplemental plan. And I can tell you this, I had a guy not long ago that had uh, psoriatic arthritis. He will never get it to switch off his Advantage Plan. Uh, he was on it 18 months and just found out about the fact that to switch he had to go through underwriting. But psoriatic arthritis is, is a declinable condition and he will be on that Advantage plan for the rest of his life. And so there are things that can happen that would cause you to be on that Advantage plan forever. Now, that doesn't mean you're stuck with bad insurance, but you're going to have to live with the issues of that. All the networks, the max out of pockets, resetting every January, pre-authorization. So you're going to have to live within that system. And so many people think because Medicare has this open enrollment season, they can just switch and move around with no rules, no, no restrictions or limitations. And that's absolutely not true. In most states, to be able to get off of that advantage to a supplemental plan, you're going to have to medically qualify to make that move. I've had people that said, I'm going to start with an advantage, and at the age of 70 or so, I'm going to switch. Uh, my health may start declining at that time, and so I'm going to go ahead and make the switch after five years. Had a lady uh, not, not long ago had this happen to, actually, last open enrollment season. Uh, she was going to make the switch, made an appointment to, to come and see me in my office. And what happened was two weeks before our appointment, she went to see her dermatologist. Uh, they removed uh, a mole off of her and sent it off for biopsy, and it was melanoma. 
okay? So her plan really backfired because now she has melanoma. She has to be melanoma, cancer-free, treatment-free for at least two years with most, most companies, some three years. And so she's still on her Advantage plan because of that melano melanoma diagnosis. Okay, so there's things that can happen uh, that uh, could uh, keep you from being able to switch those plans. And so that really is one of the big disadvantages of those Advantage plans. Hey, if you're looking for someone to help you hold your hand through this entire Medicare enrollment process, we would love to do that. Our team is standing by to help you. We help about a thousand people a month go from Medicare confusion to having their plans enrolled, and it takes probably less than an hour. Go to the pinned comment below and you can book your appointment. So with all these disadvantages, does it make the Advantage plan bad? No, it doesn't. But what it does do is at least shows you how your insurance is going to work. Because when you watch the TV ads and the celebrities and all the famous athletes, ex-athletes, uh, it looks as though you should take an Advantage plan. And I'm telling you, these are some reasons we need to make sure that you're positive that the Advantage plan is going to be the very best for you because it could be a lifetime choice.